You can hear me? You can hear me now. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to the Farm and Seed School Updates webinar. My name is Katie Knowles. I am the Farm and Seed School Coordinator um, with DOE Child Nutrition. Um, we're going to be talking about um, lots of updates and just reminders about uh, Farm and Seed School programming. Um, at the end, we'll have time for questions. So please enter your questions in the Q&A box and we will be happy to answer them. So on the agenda today, um, we're gonna to be talking about uh, local foods purchasing incentives, uh, of which we have two. So we've got the state local foods fund and the federal local food for schools. Um, second, we are gonna talk about um, harvest of the month. Um, we're gonna be talking about our new main regional local foods project. Um, we'll talk about some upcoming local foods trainings. Um, we'll talk about fishermen feeding Mainers program um, and then some more farm and seed school related upcoming events. So first off, we'll talk about the state local foods fund. This is a permanent state fund where you'll be reimbursed a dollar for every $3 spent on local foods. Each district gets up to $5,000 in reimbursement, um, and you can get an extra $500 for attending a DOE local foods training. You submit claims by the 9th of every month, and you email them to me. Um, these are done outside of CMP web, um, so you just email your claim and your receipts to me, but we'll talk more about that at the next page. So just at the top, um, we have a link that you'll be able to click um, later on when you receive this presentation in a PDF form. But the Child Nutrition Program's Farm and Seed to School webpage is an amazing resource for any sort of local foods, questions, or resources that you may need. Um, I would bookmark it for any content that you may need. So we're gonna talk about submitting a uh, state local foods fund claim. So when you're on our webpage, you'll see here, you click state local foods fund. You'll click on the summary claim form to download it. And if I were you, I would save a blank one for future use. That way you don't have to keep trying to find the form and you'll know that you'll have the right one. Once you've downloaded the claim form, um, you can read the opening page. It just has some more information and it has directions on how to submit the claim. Once you've done that, you can click on the um, sheet tab at the bottom. This is claim sheet. And to submit the claim, you fill out the yellow cells only. This spreadsheet is amazing. It does all the math for you. So you don't have to divide it by three to get the one third reimbursement. Um, and if you can, if you could please send me a copy of this form in Excel format with your claim, um, even if you send me a scanned copy as a PDF, um, it just helps me a lot with data collection and tracking um, local food spending. Um, but as you can see in the bottom, we have a spot for contact name and legal agent signature. Um, so it's just important to note that the con contact name is the filer, which would be you um, or the nutrition director. Um, and the legal agent signature is your approver. So that's commonly the superintendent, but it's in CMP web. So whoever approves your monthly claims is who would be signing the legal agent signature. Um, this is just a reminder. Some people put their name for both, um, but you can't file and approve your claim just like you can't in CMP web. Um, we're doing this differently just because it's done outside of CMP web this year, um, but probably moving forward, it won't, but just for now, we need your legal agent signature on the claim for the state local foods fund. So moving forward, including in your state local foods fund claim, you need receipts and invoices that clearly identifies the local product. You can see here that I've circled Greenwood Orchards. It says that it's in Turner, Maine. That's perfect, whoops. Um, and then you'll have to submit your 
Local Foods Fund summary claim form. And again, just a reminder, the legal agent signature um, is required at the bottom for it to be approved. Um, so email your claim to me. So the receipts and the claim form um, to the email there, katynoles at main.gov by the ninth of every month. So we're gonna be talking about um, allowable purchases with the state local foods fund. So in general, local allowable purchases are gonna be locally grown or produced. Um, eligible products include produce, grains, beans and legumes, value added dairy, maple syrup and honey, 100% juice, so long as it's pasteurized, and then certain processed and value added food products. And we'll get more into that later. So to get more specific, for the state local foods fund, um, eligible produce includes locally grown or produced, minimally processed, whole cut, whole, I'm sorry, whole cut and produced fruits and vegetables, frozen vegetables that have not been cooked previously, and then 100% juice and cider, again, so long as they're pasteurized. Some examples of ineligible purchases include value added or processed products, such as pickles, kimchi, jam or preserves, pre-made coleslaws or salads, um, frozen French fries that have been par-cooked is um, a common mistake. Um, and you'll see at the bottom, unless it is an approved value added or processed product, which we do have a process for that I'll talk about later. So for the state local foods fund for dairy, allowable purchases include locally grown or produced value added dairy. So this includes yogurt, sour cream, cheese, things like that. But another important thing to note is fluid milk is not an allowable purchase for the state local foods fund. Just a reminder. So continuing on uh, for the state local foods fund, grain allowable purchases, locally grown or produced, minimally processed grain products. So this includes locally milled flour, pizza dough, rice, and pasta. Um, ineligible purchases would include pre-baked bread, pizza, pastries, cakes, and cookies, unless it is an approved value added or processed product. For protein, Allowable products for the state local foods fund include minimally processed proteins. And this includes, but is not limited to livestock. So whole animals for slaughter, beef and pork. So ground in patties or in steaks, poultry could be ground boneless or bone in, tofu and tempeh and fresh or frozen fish and seafood. As a note, all meat must be slaughtered in a USDA or state inspected slaughterhouse. Some ineligible products, unless it is an approved or value added or processed product, include salami, pepperoni, pre-made meatballs, meatloaf, falafel, sausages and hot dogs, or crab cakes. So any meat that has not just been ground up, but has had some sort of ingredients added to it to either enhance its flavor or add flavor to it would be considered a, not a minimally processed protein. So now we're going to talk about value added and processed foods. As you saw, there were a bunch of asterisks saying, unless it is approved. So it's a great thing that value added and processed foods are now eligible under the state local foods fund. Uh, this changed in 2023 as part of new legislation. Um, the guidelines are that the processed product must contain at least 51% local ingredients. It must be processed in the state of Maine. And in order for it to be eligible for reimbursement, the processor must apply through the DOE Child Nutrition website. Um, there is a list of approved and pro um, processed food products um, on our website. And here it is right here. There's a link there um, as more hopefully will continue to be added throughout the year. Um, but as you see, we, all, we have um, Maine marinara, we have a, a bunch of soups from Hurricanes, premium soups and chowders, and then we also currently have natural casing frankfurts from Maine Family Farms. 
So do you potentially have a locally processed food that you would like to be eligible for the local foods fund? If so, let us know. We're trying to get more local processed and value added food to be eligible for the fund. Um, you don't have to do all the legwork. If you email me the name of the business and product that you would like to be eligible, and if you have it, contact information of someone who would be able to apply, send that to me. I will reach out to them with the directions on how they can apply. And then they'll be added to the list as soon as I get all of the necessary information. Now we're moving on to federal local food for schools, otherwise known as LFS. This is another local foods purchasing incentive that we have. Um, so this is a one-time temporary federally funded program. That means we received funding in 2023. We did not receive more this year and we haven't been told that we're receiving additional funds in the future. Unlike the state local foods fund, which reimburses at one third, this is a 100% reimbursement. The allocation amounts were based on district enrollment in 2023, and they expire in December of this year. Um, all foods purchased must be locally grown and produced in Maine only. And there's a focus on small and socially disadvantaged farmers with purchasing, though it is not necessary, it is just there is a focus and emphasis on it. So submitting an LFS claim is different than the state local foods fund. We're back on the web page, on the home page. You click on the federal local food for schools button. You will find right towards the top LFS summary page. You will click that and you can download the summary page and you can save a blank page for future use. Um, the claim form this year is slightly different than last year. It now includes a drop down menu of commonly used producers. Um, and you can still type in a new producer if the producer you're using does not exist on the list. Um, we're doing this just because we need to collect information for the USDA and we were getting a lot of typos, so the same product would be entered in, but with a slightly different spelling. So we're just trying to eliminate um, extra work on our end. And it also makes it easier for you if you can just click it in instead of typing it. Um, but as you see, it's very similar to the State Local Foods Fund. Um, the only difference is, is that you get a 100% reimbursement. Um, and there are some extra questions like, is this a new product? Um, and whether or not uh, the farm is socially disadvantaged. So you will not email this to me. Instead, you will be submitting this in CMP web with your regular monthly claim. You'll see it under the local foods fund. Where I've circled, please enter in 100% of your receipt totals. Ignore where it says enter in one third of receipt total. That is just for the local foods fund, but we're not using it like that this year. So just ignore it, put in 100%. So you will upload the receipts and invoices in PDF format as a, and then in a separate folder, you will upload the claim form in Excel format. So you'll be uploading two files um, and entering in. It is really important that you enter in the amount where I've circled because if you don't, then we will not be notified that you have submitted an LFS claim in CMP web. Um, so just as a reminder. So what's eligible for LFS? Um, so this is from the um, FAQ section of USDA. Um, so examples of allowable food products include fruits and vegetables, including 100% juices, grain products such as pastas and rice, meats, meat alternates such as bean or legumes, and fluid milk, and other dairy foods such as cheese and yogurt. Um, food in a wide variety of minimal processing states, so this equals whole, cut, pureed, et cetera. Um, and fresh, frozen, canned, dried are also allowable. Um, so the big difference with this is that milk is eligible under the federal LFS program. It is not eligible under the local foods fund. So for unallowable items, so foods that are generally understood to be significantly processed or prepared are unallowable. 
Uh, this includes um, baked goods, breads, muffins, crackers, prepackaged sandwiches or meals, other prepared and pre-cooked items that come in ready to eat forms um, that require no further preparation beyond heating. Um, and so just to kind of top it all off, what is the difference between LFF and LFS? The state local foods fund is a permanent fund. It reimburses at one third reimbursement, whereas federal LFS is a temporary federal fund and reimburses at 100%. Um, you can see the differences here. You can go back and look at them, but it is just good to know that the state fund is, is one thing and the federal fund is another, and there are different processes and there are different eligible products. Um, but luckily we have a list on our website. And so you can look, it says whether it is eligible under the state or federal program. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. So of course, if you have a specific question, you can always email me and I will let you know. So where can schools purchase local foods? You can purchase directly from your farmer or producer, a cooperative, a food hub, a local food processor, a food distributor, um, but as always, make sure you are sourcing from a reputable producer. Um, so it's always good to know where exactly your food is coming from. If you're purchasing from a farmer, it's always good to visit and make sure that they're coming from a reputable source. Next, we're gonna talk about Harvest of the Month. So Harvest of the Month is a nationwide marketing campaign that promotes the use of seasonally available local products in schools. Each month, a different local product is highlighted and participating schools pledge to serve the product and promote it through educational materials and activities. So when schools pledge to join Harvest of the Month, you're pledging to serve the local Harvest of the Month ingredient at least twice um, a month on your menus. Um, you're agreeing to display Harvest of the Month materials provided by DOE Child Nutrition. Um, in addition, you're encouraged to host Harvest of the Month themed and related events such as taste tests. Um, in return to pledging, you receive from us monthly toolkits that um, include posters, fact and recipe sheets, stickers. Um, you'll receive a monthly newsletter email um, in addition to resources and support uh, from me. Um, as always, I am a resource to you. So here's an example of what the toolkit toolkits look like and what you'll be receiving. So you'll get posters, um, you'll get fact sheets, you'll get source cards. And then if you'd like, you can also receive stickers. Uh, Main Harvest of the Month is it's a really great way to promote locally sourced ingredients throughout the school year. Um, it works great as an introduction to farm to seed and seed to school, or it's a great way to continue doing it if you're very experienced. Um, it's very low barrier. You only have to serve the uh, local ingredient uh, twice a month. So it's just a really great program all around. Um, and it's never too late to pledge for Harvest of the Month. So if you go on our website, um, if you've pledged before, we now have a new pledge form that is a lot shorter than the previous one. And it basically is just you saying, yes, I'm still pledging. You can request not to receive as many posters if you've saved them. Um, you can change how many posters you'd like. Um, it's a really nice, easy, streamlined way to continue your support for Harvest of the Month, even if you don't need to have materials mailed to you. Um, and then we also have a new Harvest of the Month pledge form. Um, so this is for people who have never pledged before, um, and it just is a little more involved. We just have to know how many schools you have so we know how much to send to you. Um, so speaking of Harvest of the Month, um, I'm going to be refreshing Harvest of the Month, um, hopefully with a um, school year 26 rollout. Um, we hope to add new recipes and collateral, um, new resources, and um, there is the possibility for some bonus harvest, harvest of the Month ingredients. Um, I'm 
going to be distributing a survey later in the fall, getting feedback about what can be done to improve the program. Um, but as always, if you have something that you're just like chomping at the bit to tell me about, email me with any feedback. Next, I'm going to be talking about our really new, exciting Maine Regional Local Foods Project. Um, so this is a new pilot project um, by our office. Um, it's a two-year project, so it starts in October of this year and ends in June of 2026. It's funded by a USDA Farm to School State Formula Grant, and its objective is to expand and deepen the impact of farm and seed to school programming in schools. Um, the way it will work is there will be nine local foods coordinators, um, one for each superintendent region in Maine. Um, the coordinators are going to work with school nutrition staff to provide fresh, locally sourced foods and school meal programs. They'll also help facilitate projects and activities that enable students to learn about local agriculture and nutritious foods. So for the first year, um, we will have, be having our pilot year. So we will only have four regions participating. Um, and those regions are Aristic County, York County, Western Maine, and down East Maine. In year two, uh, we will have a full implementation. So we will be adding on Penquist, Midcoast, Kennebec Valley, and Cumberland County. And in addition, uh, Down East will, Hancock and Washington County will each get their own coordinator instead of having one for the two counties this year. Um, this is a really exciting project. Um, we will be reaching out to schools in year one um, very shortly, if you haven't heard from us. And um, we should be having our coordinators starting in less than a month. So it's really exciting. Um, and of course, as always, if you have any questions or feedback about what your region uh, needs, because the objective of this project is to take a very regional approach to farm and seed to school. Um, please reach out to me. Um, and I'd also be happy to pass any information along to our local foods project manager. Next, we're gonna talk about local foods trainings um, for the school year. Um, so, happy and excited to be starting monthly trainings um, this year. Um, there's going to be a mix of recorded and in-person um, local foods trainings and a tentative calendar will be posted um, in a Thursday update soon. Um, some of the trainings will happen in our culinary classroom in Augusta. Um, I plan on having some field trips in the spring. Um, and as a reminder, districts receive an additional $500 in state local foods fund reimbursements if they attend um, a local foods training. Um, and this webinar counts as a local foods training. So if you would like this to be counted um, for your extra $500, um, email me so I can mark you down. Next, I'm gonna talk about um, Fishermen Feeding Mainers. Um, this is an awesome program. It's coordinated in partnership with Maine Coast Fishermen's Association. Um, it provides uh, direct financial relief to fishermen by helping them uh, supply schools and families in need with healthy Maine seafood. So how the program works. Um, Fishermen Feeding Mainers provides schools and CACFP sponsors with free Maine caught fish. Um, this fish is flaky white fish, um, for example, hake, monkfish, cod, haddock. Um, it all depends on what is available um, and it is received uh, frozen. Um, as a reminder, pickup is in Portland and it's sometimes at a very short notice. Um, and you can be notified when free fish is available uh, via email by visiting um, our farm and sea school um, child nutrition webpage. Um, we'll email you, or Maine Coast Fishermen's Association will email you when fish is available. Um, you sign up and then you just um, go and pick it up. Um, I know that for schools that aren't in Southern Maine, this can be a challenge. Um, but what I would recommend to you is maybe um, 
finding some districts in your area um, and coming up with a plan to maybe take turns, you know, say like, hey, this time, like the next time I'll do it and then you'll do it the next time. And that way you can kind of collectively work together to source the fish. Um, but as always, um, please email me because I'm happy to help connect you with schools that are already participating um, to see what we can work out. So we've got some exciting events that are happening this fall um, that can help you get involved in Farm and Seed to School. Um, this week actually is Maine Harvest Lunch Week um, and October is National Farm to School Month. Um, these are both great ways to get involved with Farm and Seed to School um, and they're both wonderful opportunities to spend federal and state local foods funding especially if you need to get those federal funds spent because we do only have until December. The main Harvest Lunch Week is this week, which is super exciting. Um, it's an annual week long event. Uh, it spans back decades and celebrates Maine's local producers by, by promoting the use of local food in cafeterias across the state. Uh, districts are also encouraged uh, to host Maine Harvest Lunch Week related events and activities. Um, and if your district has exciting plans, um, we'd love to know about it and celebrate your work. I'm going to be writing up um, a little news article about it. So please email me with any details, pictures. Um, we'd love to celebrate you and your work. So October is National Farm to School Month. Um, Join thousands of schools, early care and education sites, farms, communities, and organizations across the country um, to celebrate food education, school gardens, and lunch trays filled with healthy local ingredients. Um, the National Farm to School Network has um, really awesome resources. They have a Farm to School Month toolkit uh, for schools to use. Um, it's also a great way to integrate Harvest of the Month um, into your school nutrition programs. And in addition, um, we also have our fall info meeting coming up. Um, I'm sorry, this is September. It's supposed to say October 17th, my bad. Um, <laughs> it's going to be at, at the Augusta Civic Center um, from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, and in addition to a lot of other great trainings and resources, we have a local foods procurement training. Um, we have um, a USDA um, Miro Farm to School representatives coming. Um, they're going to be talking about geographic preference expansion, as well as just general local food procurement information. Um, we're gonna have a panel discussion about local purchasing at different levels. Um, and um, this training also counts as a local foods training for the extra $500 for the state local foods fund. Um, and you can register on our child nutrition webpage. Um, speaking about our webpage, um, so our Farm and Seed School webpage has great recipes, videos, and additional Harvest of the Month resources. It has basically everything that you would want to find, um, but as always, if you're having trouble, um, please email me and I can direct you um, to the resource that you need. All right. And I am happy to take questions if anybody has them. We have three. Wonderful. Mashed potatoes, not allowed since they would have milk and butter. For the state local foods fund or for, so I would say for the federal local foods fund, no, because it would be considered a processed product. It's been heated. It's had additional ingredients added to it. So no, that would not qualify under the federal program. Under the state program, if you have pre-made mashed potatoes and it's locally produced, please send me the information about uh, said mashed potatoes and their producer or processor. And I would be happy to reach out to them um, with instructions on how to apply to become an approved processor. So. Um, yes, please send me their information. Are there still schools that have federal LFF money unused? And if so, can it be redistributed to others? 
So that is a wonderful question. Um, so there are schools that still have federal funds left. They have until December to spend. We actually did do a round of reallocations for that fund. Um, we reached out to districts who had already spent at least 90% of their federal LFS funds. Um, and those who responded to our email um, saying that they would like more funds and agreed to spend them by December uh, were reallocated those funds and they are now available. And they're actually in uh, maybe two or three Thursday updates ago, we had a list of every district's LFS balances, um, including those who have been reallocated and then those who just have funds left. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. In November, I am going to go through and see if there are any districts who have yet to start spending. And if in November, districts have yet to start spending their LFS funds, at that point, we will be doing another round of reallocations. Um, so stay tuned for that. Does last year's fish sign up carry over to this year or do we need to sign up again? Wonderful question. No, that is still, I am using um, the sign up sheet from last year. So if you signed up last year and your contact information has not changed, then you will still receive emails about free fish. Um, I will say if there is ever a change in people and you would like to just change the name, just email me and I can change that. Or if you don't want to be getting emails about free fish, anymore if you you know changed positions you can also let me know but no we are using the same list as last year we are using the good crust frozen dough yeah. is this able to be used for both both funds um so for the good crust you can be reimbursed through the state local foods fund um, for the good crust pizza dough. But unfortunately, um, we found out from the USDA that um, the pizza crust is not eligible for the federal LFS funds, um, unfortunately. So yes for state, no for federal. All right. Well, again, if anyone has any questions or comments or feedback, please reach out to me. Uh, my email and phone number are listed right there on the screen. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Have a great day.